Well, good evening and welcome uh, to the Sunday edition of Poland Daily. Uh, let's see what's in the news uh, today. Well, we start with uh, yesterday. Uh, the government's uh, representative uh, for the security of Poland's information space, Stanisław Żary, issued a disinformation alert. Uh, the issue is a social media campaign about the Polish government's alleged preparations to flee the country. It seems the goal of the campaign is to uh, discredit the government, but also simply to sow panic. Russia is serving up increasing amounts of propaganda about Poland. And now, a part of the social so-called Polish media is participating in it, whether willingly or not. Propaganda is entering a completely new level, announced government representative for information space security, Stanisław Żaden. A campaign aimed at creating panic among Poles is identified in social media. The thesis contained lies about the government's preparations to flee the Republic of Poland. The aim is to discredit the government, but also to sow panic over the war against Ukraine. First of all, such talk is stupid because it completely contradicts our experience of the behavior of this government and of how this government handles such matters. This is not the only sensational news that quickly finds its way into the public space. The Belarusian website of Niechta informed about the production of a Russian propaganda film, the action of which takes place during the war in Ukraine. In the self-proclaimed Luhansk People's Republic, the shooting of a film about the war with the title Polite People started. In the film, you can see a fake Zelensky, Ukrainian soldiers swastika wielding, and even biolaboratories. So are Putin's threats of a nuclear attack also an element of deceptive manipulation or a real threat that the whole world should reckon with? We will defend our land with all the forces and means at our disposal, and we will do everything in our power to protect the safety of our people. Yaroslav Kaczynski referred to the words of the president of Russia during a meeting with voters in Koshalin. Incorporation of Ukrainian lands into Russia, of course, is illegal, but with consequences. Russians recognize, according to their own doctrine, that they can use nuclear weapons when fighting in these lands. The method of annexing the Ukrainian oblast to Russia is surprising even to the regime's Russian media. I do not remember a precedent in world politics when a territory that has not been fully occupied by a given country is incorporated into its structures. Nevertheless, Poland is prepared for every eventuality. This operation of dispensing these pills has been quietly going on for some time now. Currently, it's already known that this operation is ongoing, so we can talk about it. Potassium iodide tablets mentioned by Jarosław Kaczyński are to be distributed among citizens in the event of radioactive contamination. And uh, now over to Ukraine. The Ukrainians are still fighting for their freedom, but they're also dying for Poland and Europe and not to experience the benefits of the Ruski Mir. Uh, the Ukrainian flag is already flying in Liman in the Donetsk Oblast, and military operations are still underway there. Uh, but there's no trace left of the pseudo-referendum, said President Zelensky. Uh, German Defense Minister Christine Lambrecht uh, was in Odessa yesterday. This is the first time uh, since the outbreak of the war. Uh, today, the German staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine announced uh, that the Russian army has lost more than 60,000 people since the beginning of the invasion. Today, the president of Ukraine officially announced that Ukrainian troops have taken control of the city of Liman. From 12.30 p.m., Liman is completely liberated. Uh, thank you to our soldiers, our warriors. Uh, glory to Ukraine. Liman was under Russian occupation since the end of June. Uh, dear Ukrainians, uh, today the armed forces of Ukraine uh, liberated and took control of the city of Liman in the Donetsk region. Ukraine's successes on the front line were congratulated by U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, who emphasized the important strategic role this town played for the Russians. We're very encouraged by what we're seeing right now. We even sits astride the uh, uh, supply lines of the, of the Russians, and they've, they've used those routes to uh, 
uh, to push men and material down to the south and to the west. Uh, and without those routes, uh, it'll be more difficult. So this presents a sort of a dilemma for, uh, for the Russians going forward. Uh, and we think uh, the Ukrainians have done great work uh, to, to get there and to, uh, and to begin to occupy uh, the city. Yesterday, a destroyed Ukrainian civilian convoy was found near Kupiansk. Uh, the shelling uh, took place on September 25th, but only yesterday the services managed to reach it. 24 people died on the spot, including a pregnant woman and 13 children. Today, the Ukrainian prosecutor general's office presented alarming data, which may still be underestimated. 412 children died as a result of the armed aggression of the Russian Federation in Ukraine. Seems the Russian not only murder children, but also abduct them and take them east. 104 children under the care of social institutions in the so-called People's Republic of Lugansk are being prepared for transport to the territory of the Russian Federation. This allows the occupiers to narrow the generation gap, especially in the male population. This gap is growing daily due to the losses incurred by the army. Today, Pope Francis once again appealed for peace in Ukraine. I am saddened by the rivers of blood and tears shed in these months. I am saddened by the thousands of victims, especially among children, and by the many devastations that have left many people and families homeless and threatened vast territories with cold and hunger. Such actions can never be justified. Never. Russians enlisted in the army during mobilization do not have any military training and are completely unprepared for the new reality. Hi everyone, I'm from the 1st Armored Regiment. We have been officially announced uh, that there will be no preparations before being sent uh, to the front. Uh, the regiment commanders confirm this information. Uh, the 29th will send us to Kherson. Think and decide for yourself what to do. No preparation, no shooting, no theory, nothing. Meanwhile, Ukrainian diplomacy is taking further steps uh, to integrate with NATO. Building on his dialogue with Volodymyr Zelensky, I had a call with Jens Stoltenberg to brief him in detail on Ukraine's membership application. We agreed to keep in contact on the matter and discussed NATO's further practical steps to support Ukraine in countering Russian aggression. The Russians, despite their defeats at the front, are constantly firing at Ukrainian cities. In the last 24 hours, they attacked Inneralia, Zaporizhia and Mykolaiv. Experts keep reminding us that Ukraine will not win this war without the continued support of the West. And exactly 78 years ago, on October 2, 1944, after 63 days of heroic and lonely battle waged by Polish insurgents against German troops, no longer able to continue fighting, representatives of the Home Army signed a treaty in Ozarów on the cessation of hostilities in Warsaw. Under the terms of the treaty, the German side was to provide captured prisoners of war with all rights under the Geneva Convention of 1929. The Germans also guaranteed that none of those in Warsaw during the uprising would be prosecuted for participating in the fighting, helping the insurgents, or otherwise being active in the underground state. The civilian population was to be evacuated from the city. However, after suppressing the uprising, the Germans proceeded to methodically demolish Warsaw. By the end of the year, it was almost completely razed to the ground. During the fighting, some 18,000 insurgents were killed, 25,000 were wounded and 15,000 were imprisoned by the Germans. In shelling, air raids, and mass murders, German soldiers killed 180,000 civilians. The remaining 500,000 residents of the capital had to leave the city. The Warsaw Uprising was the largest armed action of the underground in German-occupied Europe. It aimed to liberate the city before the Soviets did. However, the Red Army waited on the other side of the Vistula until Warsaw bled to death. The enormous losses inflicted during the uprising make the subject still very controversial to this day. And finally, Canada marked the second annual National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, or Orange Shirt Day, on Friday, with a march in the capital, Ottawa, to remember Indigenous children who were forced to attend residential schools and to reflect on the ongoing impacts on survivors, their families and their communities. 
The federal statutory holiday, also known as Orange Shirt Day, was established just last year. Uh, the wearing of symbolic orange shirts uh, comes from the story of an Aboriginal female writer who recounted having a new orange shirt bought by her grandmother taken away from her when she was sent to one of the residential schools. The orange shirt has become a symbol of the denial of identity, language, culture and even dignity of Indigenous people at residential schools. Marking the day, Canadians dressed in orange walked from Parliament Hill in Ottawa to a park in front of the Canadian War Museum, where a banner was displayed with the names of the 4,100 victims, encouraging people to learn about the tragedy and continue the search for truth. The Indian residential school system was established by the Canadian government in 1870 under the Indian Act, with the last residential school closing as late as 1996. According to a statement issued by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, uh, at least 150,000 First Nations, Inuit and Métis children were forcibly removed from their families and communities between 1831 and 1998 to attend residential schools, where they had to abandon their languages, cultures, spiritualities, traditions and identities. Many experienced physical, emotional, and even sexual abuse, and thousands never came home. In university, really, because it kept the truth away from us, and, and it was just painful for them to speak on uh, to the children, uh, like their grandchildren, and some, a lot of us just didn't know. In May 2021, the remains of 215 Indigenous children were discovered at a former residential school in Kamloops in Western Canada, shocking Canada and the world. In June that year, the Canadian government established the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. Well, as usual, thanks very much uh, for joining us this evening. Please stay with us for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business and other programs. But from me, it's have a wonderful week ahead.